Tosh Plumley is undoubtedly other than Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers or somebody like uh, Snowden, the biggest whistleblower in modern history. Uh, he blew the whistle in the 60s. He blew it in the 70s. He blew it in the 80s. He's one of the top people in the church hearings in Iran-Contra. And because he blew the whistle on criminal activity, he didn't lose his job. He still was a contractor and, and is still a contractor flying C-130s. Uh, he supplied Fidel Castro when he was still CIA. And uh, he's been death threatened. He's been subpoenaed. He's been harassed. He's been everything to bring you the information. And he's got more. But he is irritated that stuff that's now come out in Congress and come out on Fox News, though a, a bit whitewashed, was said here in 2013 and in 2014. Colonel Schaefer also said similar things and got in a lot of trouble. So it's important to remember what these men went through to expose what Benghazi really was. Believe me, when he's on, the government's listening. But he has a lot of supporters in the government as well. The government's made up of good and bad people. That's why all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing, uh, as, as many of our founding fathers said in different ways. So I want to play a couple-minute clip of Tosh breaking down the Benghazi info years ago here that's now household information. Then we'll get the latest from Tosh Plumley. Here it is. Again, in your own words, wh what happened at Benghazi? Because my intel is from multiple sources, they killed the ambassador and his crew because they were saying no to giving missiles to Al Qaeda. They were not only saying no to giving missiles to Al Qaeda. That was the second deal. We were giving a high impact weapons to the Syrian rebels within that group was some of the Al Qaeda members and so on like that, which pilfered those weapons and used them against our people. The story about someone doing a film that made the people go radical and go crazy over there was a cover story to, uh, to cover a top secret ongoing operation of arms shipments to the Syrian rebels, period. Before our president, commander in chief, decided that we needed to arm the Syrians. I am not a conspiracy person. This information that I got comes from multiple sources. In other words, it was a very serious situation that was rapidly developing over there. In other words, the State Department and other uh, agencies refused or did not get back to them in time because they were concerned of how that was going to look politically. It would be a political bombshell if it was revealed that U.S. weapons at that point in time were being given to uh, factions in the Middle East uh, through Turkey, Jordan, it would also expose methods and procedures. It would also expose our CIA safe houses that were operating in Jordan and other places, Pakistan and Turkey uh, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, it would expose those operations that were uh, involved. It would expose our politicians on both sides of the aisle that was involved in corporate gain. The information that I had about missiles um, going to the wrong places came two years ago. It was, I think, even talked about on your on your show, Alex. Yeah, it was um, talked about here first with you, yes. Yes, right. And, uh, and uh, at that point, I started getting a little heat. Uh, politicians did not, some people did not want to hear this. It was not uh, with the administration. It was not the policy of the administration at that point in time. Um, they, uh, was, the CIA's Forrest Gump was talking again about things he knew absolutely nothing about. Well, about a year later, it, it was confirmed. Another thing that was confirmed around that time was the uh, training bases that was inside uh, Jordan. Um, and was also safe houses in Turkey and Jordan uh, where U.S. weapons and also Russian weapons were being stored in these safe houses and they were also had training sites at various places located in Syria, Jordan, and Turkey. Now, where did that information come from? That information didn't come from our intelligence. It came from NATO intelligence and other sources, including the French. All right, that's Tosh Plumley. Uh, we're going to skip this network break because this is so important, but no other breaks can be skipped so that he gets more time. That was uh, two and a half years ago and then a year ago. Now all of this is starting to come out, and Tosh is irritated that Fox News, others ignored what he was saying when it first came out. Now they're covering it, and now we know Hillary was taking money from these foreign governments at this very time to her Clinton Foundation when she headed up the State Department and allowed all this to happen. So 
unbelievable criminal activity, extremely naked. Tosh, thank you for your courage. Thank you for coming on. I know you've had disinformation campaigns launched against you, a lot of harassment, Justice Department threats since you've been on. We've had a lot of escalation as well uh, for covering this issue. But the good news is the info is out. So go ahead. Don't pause. You've got the floor. Well, okay, uh, Alex, let me clear up a couple of things. I am totally retired now, not indebted to any kind of government agency or so on like that. So that was just the last year or so then? Yeah, right, just the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I sort of got back involved through friends, through associates uh, that knew that these things were going on, illegal acts. Uh, some of them were getting tired of being uh, uh, labeled that these were intelligence failures uh, that was uh, bringing these things to, to light. They were not intelligence failures. They were totally political failures. Uh, a lot of us pilots, a lot of us ops on the ground, um, we stay in touch with each other. Um, a couple of my friends got transferred over to, uh, they are still military active, got transferred over to NATO intelligence. And, uh, and then that's how I sort of got back involved in this and um, become an investigative reporter, if that's what you want to call it. So uh, at the time, two years ago, when we were talking about this, um, these were allegations, um, and these were mostly labeled by this administration and the State Department as being conspiracy-oriented, uh, politically out to grind someone down or something like that. That was not the case. So what I started doing was, uh, as you know, started pulling all this information together that gets buried by mainstream media scattered out there to where the average uh, person cannot even find it. Uh, it, it, even if they're looking for it or they know where to go to find it. So I started uh, Facebook using that Facebook as a tool, not as a gossip rag, but as a tool to bring all this information together about Benghazi and other illegal activities uh, in reference to international gun running uh, that was going on um, within our government. Um, there are some damn good people inside our government, as you mentioned earlier, uh, and then also there's some very bad eggs. Uh, so I've been privileged, if that's the right word to use, to watch this thing unfold for over 40 years. I've been in and out of ops. Uh, I've been chastised. I've been shot at. I've been anyway, but it's not about me. It's about the operations, the operations that we get involved with, the operations of how they become infiltrated by political interest. Uh, how we are not allowed to do our particular jobs uh, in upholding the Constitution and protecting uh, uh, this nation because of infiltration with uh, political um, agendas. Uh, so I don't want to ramble and all that kind of stuff. The reason You're not I, rambling. I mean, break it down. Uh, the reason I got back in sort of touch and got back involved on this and trying to stay focused on the Benghazi thing, there's so much corruption going on out there within this government, within this administration, within the State Department, within the DOJ, so much corruption based on political interest that uh, it's appalling to me. And I believe as an American citizen, it's my responsibility, and it also is a past military CIA operative, uh, dating all the way back to the Cuban era, all the way up to now, um, uh, taking the shots, taking the hits, taking the discrediting, taking all the uh, other stuff, I believe it is my responsibility to say, okay, talk about what you know and bring it all together into one place and let's get it out there. So anyway, that's where I focused back on Benghazi. Two years ago, this information was available to mainstream media. Mainstream media is totally controlled by the man, if you want to call it the man, by our political interest. Uh, we do not have uh, investigative reporters. We have a few uh, that worked the, the beats, but they are controlled by political interest and also senior editors, and they cannot get their particular stories forward. That's the same case in, in this deal with Benghazi. Good investigative reporters have this story. They have had this story for years, but they're blocked because of State Department, because of uh, stonewalling, uh, because they can't get their uh, uh, information, even though it's highly vetted from many, many different uh, uh, creditable sources, they can't get it past the gatekeepers that are now in mainstream media. And I'm talking about all the major networks and all that. So now 
the good thing about the uh, internet is that now we and those people that really want, uh, you know, whistleblowers, I'm not crazy about that term, truth uh, people, trying to get their stories out. The only place that they can get them out is on programs like yours, Alex, and other programs, Hagman and Hagman, and I, I won't name them all, but there's a bunch of them, uh, coast to coast. Uh, uh, anyway, and I've been on all of them, uh, and I, but I've been consistent in what I'm saying. In other words, we have a, a government now that is a we and they. We have an environment in this country that is now a we and they situation. We have been desensitized to where we accept whatever they tell us. They manipulate the news media. They manipulate the reports. And I don't want to get on a soapbox and start ranting and off on all this kind of stuff. These are established facts. Anybody can check them out. Now, the reason that uh, I've zeroed in and try to stay focused on Benghazi is because on your program, you're the first person on the program. You and Coast to Coast were the first persons that actually took this broadcast of where we went out and we said exactly what was going on. We named Stinger missiles missing. We named the annex. We named weapons coming off of the, uh, Gaddafi stockpiles in Libya being transferred into radical groups. We made statements that this administration knew about it. The U.S. State Department knew about it. The CIA knew about it. The military intelligence operatives out of the Pentagon, they knew about it. That does not mean that these people condoned it. They knew about it, but their hands were tied. In some cases, pensions were involved. IRS jumping all And over. so we are the only ones crazy enough to put out the truth, so they used us you through these conduits to tell the truth because they were so disgusted. Well, that's what happened with me in Mexico uh, when uh, I, a friend of mine, uh, Marco News, covered it. Um, I was contacted uh, by a task force that was working inside Mexico telling me they didn't, that I would not believe what was going on in Mexico as far as weapon shipments going into the Mexican army and be filtrated into uh, my buddy Joaquin Guzman, El, uh, El Chapo, uh, Carl Quintero and all this kind of stuff. In other words, all I witnessed was a dog and pony show that came out of the State Department and the U.S. government. You know, I should have mentioned that. We'll get back into Benghazi, but promise me you'll talk about El Chapo because, as you just said, you know him. I know, uh, yeah, I know, well, <laughs> I can tell you a lot of funny stories about that. Oh, I know. This is very dangerous information. You haven't told a lot of it. You all better right. just say it all. I don't want him coming after us. But listen, well, let Let's just get into all this now. Let's go ahead and get into the... You were upset about the fact that they're now covering some of Benghazi, but not all of it. Get into it. Well, okay. Uh, the Benghazi thing came to me from a NATO source that had worked the Mexico beat back uh, in 2009, 2008, 2009, and 2010. Uh, the House of Death and, uh, and um, the old Fast and Furious program, they also got uh, shoved under the rug. Um, so those sources... Uh, eventually went to drone school up in Nevada and then got transferred over to a NATO outfit over in Europe. Uh, as a result of that, some of the C-130 pilots that I, I didn't fly these runs, I'd flown er uh, earlier runs uh, for the government. But in this particular case, I was more of an investigative reporter, or at least that's what I was passing myself off as. And they were, in turn, passing this information back to me. They were flabbergasted about how openly this information was going, about refueling. C-130s packed with arms and ammunition going to the Middle East. And as you direction. said, it was the State Department with its export power that was giving the cover and the authorization for things that were clearly illegal. And now we know Hillary was being paid by foreign governments directly for it. This is pure espionage. Well, exactly. And uh, you covered it on, on your program, Alex, where we um, I, was, I, I looked straight in the camera like I'm looking right now and told you this. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, so, okay, then, then it comes out, I'm going to get subpoenaed. And so I met, said one statement to him back then, and I think it was Grassley or Gowdy, I can't remember. I mean, I, to me, they're all the same. But, uh, and I don't mean that negative or derogatory. No, Senator Grassley. About whoever, you know, whatever they are. Um, um, <laughs> anyway, so I, uh, I was contacted, had this information, Put it out there that uh, uh, the biggest thing was Ambassador Stevens found out about the missing Stinger missiles. 
Uh, you have a clip there about McCain saying that uh, all the uh, pigs fly and all that. But, uh... Tell you what, stay there. We got to go to break. Our guest, Tosh Plumley, is with us. We'll also try to give you uh, some of the internet sites that have his information mirrored so you can check it out for yourself. But he's going to get into more on Benghazi and then El Chapo that we talked about on this broadcast two plus years ago. And now El Chapo has escaped from prison. Stay with us. Coming up in the fourth hour of Overdrive, we're bringing back the fourth hour on satellite for the stations for everybody. We're going to have Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. They're going to air a special report from last night's nightly news with a former Treasury agent, whistleblower, dealing with the fact that there is parallel construction in all the federal agencies to frame people, to create fake cases, and then put innocent people in prison. That's been confirmed with the DEA. They're still doing it. So there is a mainlining of corruption now that is just unprecedented to where the government is beginning to go pure evil. And a lot of good people in government are blowing the whistle. This is not an us against government thing, but it, it is true that government is the big hammer through which these mafias are able to do this. Tosh Plumley is our guest. Um, Survival Shield X2, the best nascent iodine out there that fills up the thyroid and other glands with the good halogens, so the fluoride, the chlorine, the bromide, the bromine can't get in there. Uh, my energies increase, health, skin health, uh, memory, stamina, <sighs> weight loss is what I've personally experienced. Read the hundreds of reviews that we have linked on the site to third-party uh, big review sites and hear and read the, the rave reviews for yourself and see the facts, the studies at InfoWarsLife.com. You can also, uh, again, order that and get free shipping for the month of July. It will sell out in the next week, and then we'll be out of it for at least two to three weeks, maybe longer. So if you want to take advantage of that, do that. It was gone for over two and a half months. Prostagard, 10 powerful ingredients. Three of them, one of the rarest things out there, even have the government admitting, yes, saw palmetto and these other ingredients really do help the prostate. That is their Prostagard. The best formula at the lowest price is available at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. We also have 25% off all the Molon Labe uh, Made in America belt buckles, 10% off all the Second Amendment and pro-liberty and anti-globalist, anti-communist uh, shirts. Great way to meet like-minded people and promote the truth. Got a lot of simple InfoWars.com shirts, high-quality, very inexpensive shortwave portable radio, solar-powered, uh, non-GMO seeds for your garden and your fall garden coming up, and free shipping in the month of July. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. Now, going back to Tosh Plumley. Tosh Plumley again run through Benghazi, why you've been a little bit upset about they're finally admitting a lot of it and then nothing's being done. And then let's get into El Chapo, the Mexican drug war, how all this ties together and where you think this country's going. And do you still have your Facebook up where you've been updating? I know it's been censored some and attacked some so people can go read your questions for the government and other uh, salient points. Uh, yeah, yes, Alex, I do. And uh, thank you, by the way. Uh, yes, I do have uh, Robert Toss Plumley uh, Facebook page. I've been pulling all this stuff together, uh, uh, vetting it the best I can, and also other people that's in military have been vetting some of the information uh, to confirm it. Uh, just before we uh, went on break, we were I was talking about the uh, statement that uh, Senator McCain had made uh, in reference to Stinger missiles. Uh, and first, I want to qualify something. I have absolutely no axe to grind with Senator McCain, and I have absolutely no axe to grind with, with uh, uh, um, Hillary Clinton. Um, I do have an axe to grind when they sit and try to take uh, shots at uh, sitting military people, generals, colonels that know this information, and that's the reason that they have come out and contacted me uh, they can't come out, and some of them have, by the way, but they've lost their jobs. They've had IRS attack them. They've, uh, they've gone through the gamut. They've paid some dues and so on like that. But anyway, I'm back to what the statement was about the Stinger missiles. I was privy to information about Stinger missiles being got, uh, uh, rerouted into ISIS hands through the direct commercial sales program that was monitored out of the U.S. 
State Department, uh, also known as the Blue Lantern Report. Uh, Bill Conroy uh, of uh, Narco News had wrote an extensive article about the direct commercial sales program and how it works. I pulled all this information out together, put it in one place, put it out on Facebook page for any young cub reporters so that they could go out and investigate and vet the information for themselves. What we run into was the fact that there was 400 Stinger missiles missing that were shipped in C-130s through the direct commercial sales program to the Middle East. They were stored in places like Gutter, Jordan, and Turkey, and also some of them in Pakistan, and also some of them in, uh, in, in other bunkers in Libya. Those places, uh, they said, was overrun, but that's not true. Those weapons were also being assimilated to radical groups out of the Syrian deal. I devised 11 questions, asking those questions, asking questions about that. So anyway, uh, get back to the Pigs Fly article. One of the reporters, and I think you have the clip of that. I don't know if you've got time to play it or what, but it's on my Facebook page, and it's about uh, John McCain was being asked about the four, about the Stinger missiles. The reporter said 1,500. He made a mistake there. There was 1,500 weapons, and now the 1,500 weapons that came from the direct commercial sales program monitored by the uh, Blue Lantern Report uh, over. Uh, overseen by the U.S. State Department, there was 400 Stinger missiles in there. Ambassador Stevens knew about this, and he had a deal worked out, was working a deal. Now, this is military intel, very sensitive information at that point in time, which I've already discussed two years ago, uh, and it was put on ice. But anyway, he had obtained information, and he had a conduit to where he could buy back those Stinger missiles for $50,000 apiece, to a radical group uh, uh, working in Libya. I went all over through this all two years ago and end up having the Department of Justice threatening me with a subpoena and all they wanted was to me to tell them where and how I received that information. They were not interested in investigating that information. So I went one step further and I said, okay, uh, I talked about Benghazi, I talked about the, uh, the uh, uh, ambassador uh, approaching the U.S. State Department to buy back some of those weapons, especially the Stingers. Shortly after that, we got a helicopter shot down. They didn't admit it, but it was with a Stinger missile. We also, okay, McCain made a statement. Oh, yeah, where are you getting this information? Oh, it's erroneous information. I know these people. They're good people. You know. And now he says it's a conspiracy theory. He never met with members of ISIS, but he's on video giving an award with Lindsey Graham to the current head of ISIS. He simply controlled like a lot of the other people. He sold his soul to the damn devil. And that's as simple as that. I have nothing against McCain. But for him to sit there and make a statement when pigs fly, and then two weeks later, those missiles were marching on bad Baghdad, and they were photographed in the back of a brand new pickup truck with an American-made 50 caliber machine gun pointing skyward at a helicopter. Now that's a fact. Now McCain says, oh yeah, Plumley says, when, pig, when pigs fly and the sun uh, rises in the west, uh, and he knows these people and they're good people. All I know is that our American forces someday will be facing those Stinger missiles and helicopters and it's already happened. Now, I don't want to get all, you know, all, all excited. We just lost. It goes against what this administration wants done. They label it as conspiracy. I am not a conspiracy freak, as they like to say. I am stating a fact. These facts that I'm telling to right on this camera right now came from the Pentagon, the U.S. Pentagon, through military sources that were active in that region. They reached out to me because they knew I, I would have the stuff in, under my armpit to go on camera and say, hey, this is what they told me, this is what you can vet, this is where you can go to vet it, and this is who you can talk to. All right, so I did that. I went into a warehouse in Mexico. I saw where the Mexican Army was getting U.S. weapons, and they were passing those weapons to, uh, uh, to the uh, business All right, that happened. That's a fact. That's well, let's now come out that the CIA was involved with Sinaloa and El Chapo. And let's talk about Chapo now. All right. Well, okay. We got the missile situation straightened out. Anyway, Ambassador Stevens, two weeks later, he was dead along with his crew. All right. Now let's talk about... And uh, that was done why from your sources? 
So again, because he was getting ready to blow the whistle on the fact that these weapons, 1,500 of them, was coming from C-130. Sure. Authorized by the Direct Commercial Sales Program, which is monitored by the State Department, are supposed to be monitored by the State Department, circumnavigated Congress, and sent those weapons to Libya. And sure, weapons and then uh, Hillary pulled the Vince Foster on him and everybody else. Now, 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 let's expand before we get into El Chapo and, and, and the other stuff you're on record to Congress with and the rest of it with Robert Tosh Plumley. His Facebook is Robert Tosh Plumley, So that's the proper Facebook for him. You can log in there and read it all. Uh, but and, and, and Robert, I would recommend you make it public because you've got it where people got to be a member or logged in to get it. I would make it an open website to whoever administers that. You will get a tax and stuff on there, but who cares? Uh, I would just go ahead and open it up for everybody. But uh, we've also mirrored the I, intel. Uh, I thought my website, I mean, my uh, Facebook page was open up to everybody. I thought. But, it know. used to be. It's on login now, but but we'll check it. It's no big deal. We'll okay. also mirror the latest info at Infowars.com. But expanding on that. You were there in the late 50s. I mean, you're a famous guy for folks that are informed. For people that don't, people don't know who you know Chuck Yeager is, is an example I've used. They don't know who uh, you know anybody important was or is, because Chuck Yeager is alive. But, I mean, you're a famous guy in clandestine operations. You're in, as I said, dozens, more like hundreds of books. You were there flying arms into Fidel Castro. That's been declassified when he was a CIA operative. Uh, you have just been involved in all of it. Uh, you blown the whistle major times, three times. Uh, it's amazing. Just retired a few years ago. That said, government, from my view, really has gotten more reckless uh, and more out of control. I know I'm not lionizing government of the past, but the recklessness to give thousands of high impact weapons, thousands of missiles, 400, 500 stingers, uh, other heat seeking missiles. And I got this from Colonel Schaefer, by the way. Uh, pretty soon as well. I ran all this by him from you, and he said, yeah, that's what we're getting. And then he got called in and chewed out uh, th that all the rebels, 99% are Al-Qaeda. ISIS is just their new name. Our government's funding them to destabilize the whole Middle East. I can't think of a time where our government funded radical, hardcore jihadis to overthrow our allies in Egypt, to butcher every Christian they can find, to blow up churches in Syria, to attack our own troops in Iraq, I mean, this is really a, a policy shift to do to do it so naked. I mean, they've done some bad stuff before, but this is America really being the bad guy. So I want to ask you, why did Hillary and McCain and Obama and the people above them think they could get away with this? I mean, I guess they are, but it makes it even crazier, Tosh, that it's come out now. And it's even admitted, and so is Fast and Furious and other things, and nobody gets in trouble. What does that say, Tosh? Well, all right, here's, here's the problem. We, American citizens, have been desensitized to the point to where we, we don't expect any more coming out from our government because we've uh, been desensitized to the point to where we simply say among ourselves, there's nothing we can do about it. So we are split. Diversions are uh, uh, run rampart. Every time something gets ready to, to pop open, that's going to be uh, earth-shattering, uh, an illegal operation that they're involved with, uh, something else comes up. They call them false flags, whatever they want to call them, uh, you know, conspiracies and, and all that. So then the emphasis goes off into that. It's all in what someone does with their PP or, or whatever. There's some, something else comes up that takes the, uh, the focus, especially from a young generation, away from the actual illegal acts that this administration is doing. Bottom line, it's all about international gun running because guns is more profitable than drugs. We've had guns and drugs, drugs and guns. International gun running has been alive and well, and I've posted this a thousand times on my Facebook page. I've looked at uh, people straight in the eye and say, hey, you ask me why, what, where, it's all about international gun running. Uh, we have an operation. We had it in the 50s. We run guns to Cuba. Uh, we run guns to Fidel Castro before he was there. We did that. I was, I've been all part of that. Uh, which, uh, the only reason that I ever started talking in the first place was to protect my butt, get the information out there before the fact, put as much sunshine as I possibly can on it, and then let them come and take their best shot at me, which has happened many times. And, and thank the good Lord I've um, survived up until whatever. But anyway, that's not, it's not about me. It's about the operation. So it's an international gun running. 
Now, the, the Stinger missiles, the death of Benghazi, the death of Brian Terry, uh, the Border Patrol guy, all this, Fast and Furious, all this stuff gets pushed to the back pages uh, by mainstream media. And also, like I said, good reporters that do have the story, that all do work for the mainstream media, they cannot get their stories uh, uh, vetted and past their senior editors that are on the take with various administrations politically. So it's a political thing. Uh, which Now, the people, us, our American citizens, have been desensitized to the point that we don't expect any more from our government other than uh, corruption. Uh, uh, and uh, we get a new senator in there, and he talks, and he's going to do this, he's going to do that. We get a new congressman in there, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. But he gets in with that environment, and there's not a damn thing he can do. Sure, he let me expand on this. You, I know we're aware Gary Webb and knew him. Uh, I was going to work with him on a new website. He was coming on the show. Um, he, he told friends and family, people are breaking into my house. I'm getting followed by feds or PIs. Uh, and then they killed him, shot him twice in the head, and then had folks say he committed suicide. Stole his motorcycle, everything else. And he had a new book coming out that was going to prove everything. Uh, but, of course, that guy killed. It came out later, and it's in the film Kill the Messenger, that I found nauseating because it was like watching reality, even look like Gary Webb, uh, Kill the Messenger. And in Kill the Messenger, it breaks down the government drug dealing, all of it. And it turns out that the editor of the L.A. Times that killed the story that ran stories demonizing Webb was CIA. So that just shows you. But how do these guys sit there in the CIA and destroy a good reporter that tells the truth? How, how do they rationalize all this, bringing drugs into America and all this crap? I, I mean, because the people I've known that were in the CIA were incredibly patriotic, Mr. America types. Same thing with the FBI. But then at the top of the FBI, it's Holder. I mean, it's just such a... Parallax view. What do you think is going on? Well, that's that's what I've uh, been saying. In other words, uh, infiltration. In other words, this takes years to infiltrate pocket people into these strategic positions. If you notice, uh, uh, our, not just this Obama administration, but other administrations have taken their cronies, cronies and nepotism and put these people that are not qualified and put them in very strategic positions to where they can control those that want to do something. For instance... Uh, when, when I was active, uh, I got a lot of heat politically because I wasn't supposed to know certain things. I'm an inquisitive person. I like to find out everything has a beginning. Everything has the nuclei. Everything starts from one little kernel of something, where it be a, a seed or what. I'm the type of guy I like to go back and find out where that seed started from. Well, that's a no-no in black ops today. Or it's, uh, the people I work with at the beginning were... Stay there. Uh, your Skype's cutting out. We're going to come yep. right back. We're going to do some overdrive, too. We've got a six-minute segment, a five-minute segment, and then expanded live overdrive in the fourth hour for stations to carry. Well, Tosh Plumley's a very credible whistleblower and investigative journalist. You can look him up in the Iran-Contra hearings. You can look him up in the church hearings. Just retired in the last few years. I know when I first had him on, he was on a phone on a C-130, getting ready to launch as soon as they were done with the call. But uh, he's now retired, and it's just frustrating to watch them kill the ambassador and give the weapons to al-Qaeda, to then go overthrow regimes that aren't our enemies. I mean, it's just to see our government doing evil, illegal stuff is sickening. So you got cut off by the break, sir. You were uh, getting into to points about all this. We haven't gotten into El Chop Chapo yet. He's big in the news right now. Can we talk about that drug war and what you know about that in Mexico? Well, okay, what I know about that is uh, <laughs> uh, before he was even captured uh, and they were looking for him and, uh, and the task force that I was talking about uh, back when Brian Terry was killed um, and the uh, Fast and Furious situation with Holder uh, uh, was a cutout person for that, uh, uh, you know, in order to protect the administration from their illegal acts uh, and so on like that. Okay, what I do know about that is the weapons, again, it's all the, the whole thing that we're talking about is based on international gun running, period. It doesn't matter where it's the Middle East or to Mexico. Now, as far as Guzman is concerned, Joppo, I mean, my gosh, he's he's been sitting out, he and Carl Quintero uh, running around down there. I mean, geez, it's predictable exactly what was, what was going on. Um, the CIA basically protects these people. They've got too much to lose. Now, there's good people in the CIA, and they know this, but they can't come out 
So they use nominees like myself and others, like the colonel that you mentioned earlier. These people, if they're still engaged and active in military ops or border patrol or whatever, they can't talk. In other words, if they talk, they, they, they jeopardize their pension and they get IRS all over them and then they get diverted into a thousand different things where they've got to stand up and waste all their time defending themselves through character assassination. And I know firsthand about character assassination. They don't kill you so much nowadays as much as they go out and use the media, mainstream media, to character assassinate you and use paid programmer people to go out. Yeah, let me just throw this out because it's happening to me, and, and I don't mind it. I expect it because the message gets out. But they now have local radio where I live, but also I've learned all over the country because they know local media is more trusted now than, 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 than dominant media. People know it's lying. So when MSNBC or CNN lies about me, it, everybody loves me. So they basically have a talking point we've now confirmed going out to all the local stations to misrepresent what I have to say. Well, Alex is glad the Sandy Hook kids died or, 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 or Alex thinks there's martial law this summer and watch it not happen. He'll be discredited. That's the new talking point. And they are assassinating me right now with people that don't know who I am. So they'll just remember that's the guy that likes to kill children. I mean, it's sick to watch it happen. Well, welcome to the club, Alex. I mean, that's the price that you have to pay. Both of us have to pay. All of us type have to pay. If we're going to get the truth about what this what this uh, go, corrupt government uh, is doing, all this uh, look, we are witnessing a dog and pony show launched, programmed, and produced out of Washington D.C. The ivory towers of those sacred halls there, you know, and they honestly think they're so arrogant that they honestly think that they have the American people desensitized to such a degree that there's not a damn thing we can do about it. We can sit here and talk about it, but then we get labeled as conspiracy. We can sit here and bring it up and vet it from a thousand different sources, but the character assassination is there. Very, uh, I've had some, a lot of good friends that's paid the ultimate price. Let's uh, talk about that back in 60 seconds, but there's a way around this. There's a, there's a certain point where the corruption gets so big, it's got to fall. You are listening so to I want to talk about that back in 70 seconds. Visit GCNlive.com today. Fourth hour overdrive, folks. You want to stay with us, InfoWars. An incredible article from RT, and I'm well aware of this. 238,000 U.S. veterans died waiting for health care. Leaked document. Document also shows poor record keeping at the agency. Now, their job is to not give them treatment. And the documents come from the VA itself. This is confirmed. They now have computers telling folks who to not give treatment to. I mean, this is sick, and it's going to get worse. This is. Anyways, Robert Tosh Plumley, his Facebook's Robert Tosh Plumley. We've got to have him back again for a full hour soon to take your calls. A true hero, because in a world of cowards, men that just are men are become heroes. And um, you've got the last five minutes here. Get into the friends you've pay, uh, had that have lost their lives, paid the ultimate price, tell the truth. And then I wanted to just mention that there, there comes a point in the graph where corruption gets so bad that it ends up falling in on itself because things just stop working and, and just start crumbling. And I think we're going to that point, so don't get too pessimistic. Uh, the arrogance of tyrants always begets their fall. Go ahead. Well, I, I agree with you. The sleeping giant is waking up. Uh, I find out out of my travels. Now, you know, we're getting a little scattered out there. You asked me about Carl. Okay, CIA had memos. Good, good CIA people had memos that this was predictable as much as, uh, hell, even before he got arrested. This has been a planned program. Here's the main reason. There's two drug lords out there that they say we are requesting uh, extradition on them. We have talked about it, but we have not filed formal papers to Mexico. The reason that we have not filed formal papers to Mexico for these two drug lords' extradition is because if they come back and talk to a federal judge, they would tell where campaign contributions went to this country and where and how they bought uh, military weapons from the direct commercial sales program and how they had inside information even before our intelligence operatives got it. So what I'm basically saying here, and I'm going to try to sum it up fast because I know we're short on time. By the way, Tosh, that was a year after we broke it, even in the Chicago Tribune and the El Paso Times, that the number two of the Sinaloa gang was extradited to Chicago. He went and told the judge, I'm national security agent, gave his code. He was actually actually an agent uh, of the CIA, and they, they released him. 
I mean, that was in the news. That, look, they covered that one up. That's a lower level than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, and I'll specifically look straight in the camera and say it. In other words, I, you know, whatever. Carl Quintero. Oh, I know the guy. Chapo. We cannot afford to make formal requests. All we can do is... Sir, your Skype bro bro broke up when you started talking about El Chapo. Did you say you know El Chapo? I, <laughs> I know all those guys in one form or another. Put it that way. And they know me in one form or another. And we have a standoff since agreement. We don't, we don't get in each other's ballpark. And I'm not getting in their ballpark, and they're not getting in mine. We're playing a tit for tat out here. Now, what I was getting ready to say, maybe I'm gone. I'm out of school again. Um, I stepped over the line again. But here's the point. Those men cannot be brought to this country, and I'll sum it up just as tight as I can, because if we put them in front of a federal judge, it will be put on the record that they have made campaign contributions into political parties in this country, and they have bought weapons through the open direct commercial sales and financed their cartel with U.S. made weapons. That was almost broke in, in the uh, Iron, I'm not the Iron Cons, but in Fast and Furious, and Zimbabwe also in Chicago tried to talk to a federal judge and they put a gag order around me and mainstream media did not cover it. Now, that's how it's played. These guys, it was predictable. And I'm not trying to rant and get up on a soapbox here. I'm just trying to tell you a straight fact, eyeball to eyeball to you, Alex, on this program. This was predictable. It was known about. The CIA had information that this was an ongoing operation and they have let those guys out because they cannot afford to file formal papers to Mexico. The mainstream media reports this. They say Mexico does not cooperate with us. We have not made a formal request for either one of those guys. Incredible. It's a CIA drug running, gun running operation. Tosh Plumley, incredible info. We'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you so much.